I extend my welcome again to you who are joining us on this Easter day. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you listened to the testimony from the Acts of the Apostles, the testimony of Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, the testimony of the evangelist, John. The texts all highlight certain things. Peter is testifying to Cornelius and his household and friends about what he witnessed in the ministry of Jesus, ministry of power and healing. In the ministry of Jesus, betrayed, crucified, dead and buried, and risen on the third day. The testimony that those who would embrace these truths would have eternal life. Later, Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, says that key thing, I'm telling you what was passed on to me, that the ministry of Jesus ended in death, a horrible death, crucifixion, that he was buried, and yet on the third day rose from the dead. And that he then appeared to Peter, to the disciples, the 12, actually the 11 at that point, and then finally to 500, and he says, you know, many of these people are still alive. They saw the risen Lord. And last of all, he says, the risen Lord appeared to me, the least of the apostles. In our gospel story, Mary Magdalene has gone to the tomb not to see the risen Christ, but to anoint the body for burial, proper burial, for honoring the Lord that she followed through his ministry. And when she gets there, the stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty, she runs back, and then the disciples, Peter and the other, the beloved disciple, run to the tomb. Peter rushes in and sees indeed the tomb is empty. Later we hear that she is weeping outside the tomb after Peter and the other disciple have returned home. And she's asked, why? Why are you weeping? And remember, she came while it was still dark to anoint a body, to take care of a corpse. And now she's distressed. Where have they laid him? After the angels address her, then this person, this man, who she assumes to be the gardener, addresses her. Why are you weeping? And she tells the same story. I don't know where they have laid him. If you will tell me, I'll go take care of that. And then he calls her name, Mary. And in that word, she recognizes the risen Lord. And then he tells her, now you go back and tell my disciples about what I have done, what I have told you, that I'm ascending to my God and your God. And she goes and says, I have seen the Lord. I tell you all of that, that little summary, quick summary of the text, because isn't that what this Easter is all about. What do you believe about the death and resurrection of Jesus? What do you believe in your heart? You know, there's that uh, commercial that's played about every five minutes, what's in your wallet? Well, I want to know what's in your heart in belief about crucifixion and death and the resurrection of the Lord. What do you believe? Who do you believe? Who has passed this story on to you? Remember, Cornelius heard the story from Peter. The Corinthians heard what was handed on to Paul. And indeed, Paul heard about the ministry of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus from his teachers. And we know that the apostles first heard the words, I have seen the Lord from Mary Magdalene. So what do you believe and who do you believe? Whose testimony do you believe? And indeed, whose testimony did you receive to come to the belief that is in your heart? 
So not only who has passed this on to you, but have you had the courage? Have you had the inspiration? Have you had the words to pass on what you believe to another? Again, I think of my parents. In my life, I first heard about the death and resurrection of Jesus from my parents. And I'd like to believe that Carol and I have passed on our belief about the death and resurrection of Jesus to our children, both of whom are parents now and will pass on what they have learned from us to their children, our grandchildren. What do you believe? Who do you believe? Who's passed on this story to you? And to whom have you shared the good news of the resurrection of Jesus? Again, the experience that you have had of the risen Lord, maybe it is like Paul's, that on his way to Damascus to round up those pesky Christians, the Lord, the risen Lord, appeared to him. Why are you persecuting me, Saul? And in that moment of conversion. Or maybe you're like Cornelius. You just say, you know what? I really want to know more about this Jesus. Peter, can you tell me about this Jesus, your teacher and Lord? Or maybe you're like Mary Magdalene. At first, you didn't really recognize the risen Lord. But as you heard that name or felt that tug upon your heart, you knew the risen Lord. Or again, perhaps you were like those apostles whom were told in the gospel were huddled away in fear of their own lives. And Mary bursts in and says, I have seen the Lord. So, how have you experienced the risen Lord? And then the final question, what difference does it make? And I'll tell you, I believe it makes a world of difference. And my prayer is that you will take your experience of the risen Lord, share it with others, bring hope into our world, and light into our world. May you have that grace. Amen.